I just had no idea, like even like some fungi can like hide underground when there's bushfires happening. They can like, like kind of burrow so that like they're, they're not burnt. Like that's incredible. My name is Madeline Gray. I'm a writer and critic from Sydney. I write freelance arts criticism and my first novel, Green Dot, is coming out in October this year with Alan and Unwin. So I need to preface this by saying that I'm in no way a science or mycology expert. Like I dropped science at the end of year 10 um, and this is not my general field. Um, but that being said, it was actually a really thrilling book to read. So basically it's, it's about kind of how fungi are, um, <laughs> for lack of a better term, subjugated in the kind of hierarchy of uh, like conservationist needs in kind of science and nature because they're hypothetically ugly or assumed to be parasitic. And there's lots of like stigma about fungi. And so Pouliot is kind of taking us through all of the beneficial properties of fungi in terms of bush regeneration. And then especially like with climate change and like all the fires that happen and how they're really important for complex ecosystems. And she's doing it all in a really like first person narrative uh, where she's having encounters with fungi herself traveling around the world talking to fungi experts from Scandinavia, Australia, lots of great First Nations specialists here and uh, she's got a really kind of lyrical approach and even though there's a lot of scientific terminology it's quite um, it's quite doable for a lay person to read it. I would say it kind of like falls somewhere between the kind of nature writing of like Olivia Lang and To the River and that kind of thing that maybe readers are more familiar with and a more straight science book. So it is more science intensive than some nature writing. But um, yeah, if you let it wash over you and have your phone next to you as you're reading it so you can Google all the cool mushrooms, I found that very helpful myself. Um, and then I would just show them to whoever was around. So that was actually super helpful because there aren't images in the book. So it's nice to put an image to what she's talking about. And now your search history is just completely fungi related? Oh, completely. It's like like umbrella mushrooms. There's ones that like, yeah, like look like parasols. There's the ghost mushroom or ghost fungi that's bioluminescent. That's on the cover of the book. So it literally glows, which is pretty trippy. Um, and then there's like cannibal kind of mushrooms that take on other plants and kind of become these weird really amorphous kind of gorgeous shapes. Uh, I think one of them was called like a crab mushroom or something. I don't know, I was super into it, but again, all from a very late person perspective. So one thing I learned, which I didn't know before, is that like toxins from poisonous mushrooms cannot be like, um, you can't just touch a mushroom and get sick. You have to ingest it. So like, it's a common like misconception that you can touch a mushroom and, and be poisoned. I mean, this is actually not even mushroom related. It's more like kind of tangential, but Pouliot is trying to express that people have all these misconceptions about mushrooms poisoning people. And she says like in Australia, the most poisonings reported every year from paracetamol. So um, wild mushrooming and practices like that are becoming way more popular amongst the youth. Um, like I worked in a bookstore for a few years up until recently, and I, I sold so many books on wild mushrooming to like hipsters in skinny jeans kind of vibes. Like it was a cool thing to do on the weekend. Um, I think we're getting to a point, especially young people, where we're understanding the importance of caring for our environment a lot more and mushrooming and fungi is like kind of like the unsung hero of like so many ecosystems. Um, and it's it's spores underground and mushrooms as well. And so there's, I think people are realizing that if they want to be kind of caregiving to the environment they're in, they have to start with the smallest things, it's not just the tree, it's the thing that makes the tree grow. So I think people are getting really into that. Um, and also just from a um, eating perspective, mushrooms are obviously delicious. Um, <laughs> so I think it's a lot cheaper to go and buy, sorry, to go and like pick porcini than it is to, to pay for it at Harris Farm.